Hello, everybody. My name is Graham Owen, and you are watching The Political Vigilante. Look at that. Look at the truth coming up from Gotham. We're recording this underneath Wayne Manor in the outskirts of Gotham City. We've talked a lot on the show about Epstein, right? One of the things I focused on is Les Wexner, who is the creator of Victoria's Secret. And we've talked about how Epstein and Les Wexner were friends for years. And Epstein and people like Jalene Maxwell would use Victoria's Secret as a recruiting tool for young girls. Oh, you want to be a Victoria's Secret model? Oh, we'll make you famous. There's even instances of Victoria Roberts Jufree saying uh, Epstein was, was like laughing because he got some parents to give them fly over their, their children. And he's like, everyone's got a price. And she would talk about it. They would laugh about that. We know Maria Farmer in her interview with Whitney Webb called Les Wexner the head of the North American snake, meaning the head of the North American pedophile sex trafficking ring. Les Wexner is big, has a big mansion in Ohio. Ohio, random weird coincidence, is uh, has really high rates of sex trafficking. Weird. That's weird. And there's also a big opioid epidemic. I'm sure he's not snatching up, you know, young girls who got injured and now are addicted to opiates and now they're prostituting themselves. And there's all these apps. Apparently, you watch that Mayor of Easttown series on HBO. And there's one of the girls in there, they talk about that. She got injured. She got hooked on. Now it's, it's a fictional story, but it's based in the reality of what's happening in Ohio and Pittsburgh and all over the country, really. And this girl in the story, fictional story, but this is, this happens in reality, got injured, hooked on opiates. And then she's on one of these prostitution apps to pay for her habit. How does that all tie into this story? Well, a model, a former Victoria's Secret model has come forward as saying she was told to have a lot of sex and get cocaine and everything when she was Vic with Victoria's Secret. It just I'm sorry, the whole model industry is pretty awful. And it's not a coincidence that Donald Trump had a modeling agency. It's not a coincidence that all this sex trafficking happens within the modeling industry. And even just, so there's the sex trafficking, which is obviously awful. And they get children, young girls to go, we'll make you famous if you want to be a big fancy model. Oh, and now you're trafficked and you're sleeping with all these older dudes and it's horrific. But the, then there's just the good old fashioned, keep the models coked up. A former Victoria's Secret model says agencies told her to use cocaine and have lots of sex to lose weight while she was under age. And we're going to hear a story in a second because she put it on Instagram. But this story, now what she's going to say, I don't think there's anything where she clearly says, oh, I saw sex trafficking happening. But if this is going on, is is and all the other known ties we have through Epstein to Les Wexner, to just the modeling industry in general, we know the tactics of uh, recruiter and pedophile sex trafficker, Jalene Maxwell, rat-faced monster that she is, that Trump said, I wish her well. <laughs> Great. So this is just, this is just, we've been exposing a lot of this on this show. I have a whole Epstein playlist, but this is just sort of more evidence to the culture in the fashion industry. I've had a few people ask me, why am I speaking up now about the fashion industry? Why didn't I speak up sooner? Let me take you on a journey through time and space. By the age of 18, I had lived in three countries alone. I traveled to all continents except for Antarctica. I've been groomed by a much older man. I've been sexually assaulted multiple times. I've been told to, to do cocaine to lose weight from my, by my agent. Been told weekly. Been on a lot of pressure to lose weight by my agencies. I developed PTSD. i um been told whilst I was underage to just have lots of sex to lose weight. Um, I was struggling with my gender identity. I had developed anorexia and orthorexia and anxiety and depression, um, couldn't socialize without drinking and was developing quite the reliance on Xanax and Ambien in order to get me through the night. And that was before I turned 18. It didn't get better from there. Before I turned 18. Encouraged to have sex with older men while she was underage. This is just one model story. 
But you start taking what she's saying, you put that with Virginia Roberts, you put that with Maria Farmer. It's just more evidence. And then eight years later, on my 26th birthday, I had a nervous breakdown and I couldn't leave my house for a year without panic attacks and severe anxiety. I also had a bout with suicidal ideations, which was terrifying, and that was four years ago. Today, I am two plus years sober, I'm four years in recovery from an eating disorder, I'm happy, I'm balanced, and I'm strong, and I feel the best I've ever felt. And the reality is, I couldn't talk about my experiences before I reached this place, because I would have intense PTSD flashbacks, I would have panic attacks, and I wouldn't be okay. But I am okay now, and that's why I'm speaking out. I'm in solid recovery, and I'm strong enough for any backlash, and I wasn't before this. The only reason why I'm doing this is because I'm a strong believer that the fashion industry needs to change. I'm one of the lucky models. I was able to make a long career out of the fashion industry. But my job should not include abuse, and that is why I'm speaking up now. And also, I am in St. Martin. Yeah. I mean, what she went through supports a lot of the stuff we've uncovered. I mean, what she's saying too, I'm one of the lucky ones that supports what Maria Farmer said of, she goes, she saw young girls just disappear. You know, she was encouraged to sleep with these older men and do cocaine and basically was groomed by an older man, which is all awful. But the sad reality that actually pales in comparison to being flown to Epstein's Island when you're 13 years old or whatever, being passed around by again, like convicted billionaire Jean Luke Brunel, friends with Jolene Maxwell, hung out on Epstein's Island. So this is just one story. And this is shows how awful the predatory billionaire class is. You know, it's said that Epstein got Brunel like two twin girl, twin sister children for his birthday or something horrific like that. Peter Nygaard has also been arrested. We talked about, he got arrested last year. He's in the fashion industry. Jean Luke Brunel's in the fashion industry. So this is, isn't some like, you know, they're going to try to say what few bad apple. They're going to play that game. Like the, oh, the Catholic church had just had a few bad apples, just a few bad apples in the police department. Just a few bad. There's not systemic racism, just a few bad apples. Now I've heard this story. I've heard the cocaine thing just from models that I've known. They're encouraged to do a cocaine and the weight thing. They're told to stay crazy skinny. These beautiful women who are like curvy or whatever, they're told, oh, they're fat and ugly. And they're just giving all these horrifying messages. But then they're given cocaine and they get to hang out on some billionaire's yacht or whatever. And they're all coked up and it's a nightmare. And you're taking advantage of a child. The human brain isn't fully developed till it's like in its probably sometimes almost 25 years old. You're talking about early to, early to mid 20s when the human brain is fully developed. So you're putting a child on drugs and flying them around and abusing them. And she's talking about the abuse. And she said, yeah, why didn't you, why didn't you talk sooner? Uh, cause it's traumatic. It's hard to talk about. You got to go through years of recovery and all this stuff, but let's focus on the Epstein Les Wexner tie. Now she mentioned, she doesn't mention Les Wexner at all. Maybe she never even met Les Wexner. I don't know, but if the head of your company is the head of the North American snake, as uh, Maria Farmer says, and then we've got this Jeffrey Epstein used now again, that this is, this is, you got to dig through this is, this is corporate media. So this is Les Wexner. There's no photos of Wexner sitting side by side with Jeffrey Epstein. He had them all scrubbed from the internet. Probably they're hard to find. You can find them. They're at this like, fashion thing and they're they're each on either there's like five or six guys sitting between them but this is also you got to be careful and i've talked about this before this is the corporate media tilting the argument to epstein use billionaire behind victoria's secret for wealth and women so used so jeffrey did all the bad stuff and the billionaire we don't even get his name in the title of course this is the new york times 
Les Wexner, I'm sure, buys a lot of ad time with the New York Times, and I'm sure he said, hey, man, get my name out of this. Do you notice in the corporate media we never talk about, or they never talk about Les Wexner? I talk about it. Other Epstein people talk about it. But the no, corporate media never talks about Les Wexner. Now, again, that, that model, she didn't mention Les Wexner, but I'm saying there's just too many. This, 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 is, this is not some random, oh, she was the one bad apple that they, oh, she slipped through the cracks or whatever bullshit they're going to try to paint. Uh-uh. And this, I show you this title, A, to show you the connection between Epstein and Les Wexner, but also the corporate media's slanting of it. And especially since Epstein's dead. Oh, we got the one bad guy. Now, and I just did a video like a week ago, they're trying to starting, the, the picture starting to be painted of, they're not gonna, Epstein hanging himself with a paper t-shirt in prison was too much press. They don't want press. The billionaire pedophiles don't want press. So now they're gonna like try to hang it on Jolene. And they're taking a year. I bet you this, why they, they took so long to put her on trial. She's Her trial is in November. She got arrested last fall. I bet you it's a year to try to find whatever hard drives and whatever damning videos she's got of all these pedophiles with children. Because they're going to hang it on her. They're going to go, it was Epstein and Jeline. Well, Epstein's dead. He killed himself and Jolene's in prison. It's over. That's the, how they're going to try to paint this. And that's what an article like this is. They even did it in that next, next Netflix thing. They, they, the survivors, the victims spoke and they said some really damning things, but then the documentarians and the final edit didn't follow up on anything. These, they just let these women make these, make these pretty damning claims and accusations about very powerful people. And then they just moved on and they, they just kind of shrouded it in this, like, Oh, who knew Epstein was, Oh, we just thought he was a financier and we didn't know. They didn't know really. So Victoria's secret models talking about, she's told to sleep with older men while she was underage and do cocaine. Les Wexer didn't know he didn't Les Wexer, the shrewd businessman didn't know who Jeffrey Epstein was. Give me a break. This is all whitewashing, these titles. Within years of meeting Mr. Epstein, Mr. Wexner handled, handed him sweeping powers over his finances. Isn't it click? So this is what they do. This is in the, the text of the New York Times article, but why isn't, why isn't Les Wexner in the title? And why isn't it, why is it worded in such a way that Epstein used? It's not, no, Wexner and Epstein, you think Les Wexner is going to, hand sweeping powers over his finances, philanthropy and private life and not know who this guy is. According to interviews with people who knew the man as well as court documents and financial records, court documents, financial records, which are hard to find. They keep trying to, they, they, all this stuff, where is all this info? Where is all this info? So I'm, I'm, I'm glad that this model spoke out. Um, I'm glad that she, uh, and I want to make sure. Hold on. I want to make sure what's going on. So I've had a few people ask me, why am I? Whoops. I want to make sure we got this correct. Her name. Bridget Malcolm. So I'm glad that this model, Bridget Malcolm, has spoken up about this. And I can't begin to know what she's had to go through. And I'm good to hear that she's sober and dealing with her, you know, her eating disorder and working on her PTSD. I'm glad that's all glad. And I'm glad she's speaking up because this actually helps with the. Epstein Les Wexner connection. Indirectly, she doesn't say it flat out, but it definitely shows it it shows evidence if you're a lawyer to create that there was a culture of of abusing underage girls and giving them drugs and having them telling them to sleep with older men, all that stuff. And there's widespread abuse in the fashion industry she's talking about. 
So you can't have widespread abuse. All these clear connections to sex trafficking, to the fashion industry, this to me is just more evidence. I'm not letting this story go. <laughs> and I hope more people come forward. I hope people come forward against Les Wexner and Prince Andrew and Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. It's out there. There's evidence out there. We'll keep covering it. Thank you, Bridget Malcolm, for, sp for uh, speaking out. I appreciate that. That's that's bold. I can't imagine what that is. I know it's not easy. I, that's, <clears throat> I know that's not easy. So thanks for watching, everybody. Shave your knuckles for justice. Bye -bye. Hey, everybody. It's Graham Elwood. We are going on the road, Ron Placone and I, in September and October. Check GrahamElwood.com for tour dates. Probably coming to a city near you. A lot of these shows have sold out in the past. We haven't been on the road in a year and a half because of the pandemic. Come out and join us. The post-pandemic comedy tour. Go to GrahamElwood.com for tickets. New cities being announced every day. Join us and support what we do at patreon.com slash Graham Elwood and rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood. Blockchain cryptocurrency platform. Thank you. You're making Gotham great again.